What is spam? Well, it, it's a kind of processed meat, sort of pink in color, comes in a can. Spam can be found in almost any grocery store, referenced in a popular Monty Python song, basically all over the place. Oh, n not that kind. In, in the digital age, spam has a new meaning. It, it's even in the dictionary. Unsolicited email, often of a commercial nature, sent indiscriminately to multiple mailing lists, individuals, or news groups. Junk email. Spam doesn't mean ads. It doesn't mean abuse. It doesn't mean posts whose content I object to. Spam is a funky name for a phenomenon that involves flooding the internet with many copies of the same message, in an attempt to force the message on people who would otherwise choose not to receive it. Most spam is commercial advertising, often for dubious products, get-rich-quick schemes, or quasi-legal services. Spam costs the sender very little, often nothing. Most of the costs are paid for by the recipient or the carriers, rather than by the sender. Email spam targets individual users with direct mail messages. Email spams typically cost users money out of pocket to receive. Many people, anyone with measured phone service, read or receive their mail while the meter is running, so to speak. Spam costs them additional money. On top of that, it costs money for online services to transmit and store spam, and these costs are transmitted directly to subscribers. One particularly nasty variant of email spam is sending spam to mailing lists, public or private email discussion forums. Because many mailing lists limit activity to their subscribers, spammers will use automated tools to subscribe to as many mailing lists as possible so that they can grab the lists of addresses or use the mailing list as a direct target for their attacks. Other types of spamming include posting commercial ads to Usenet news groups that do not permit it. Posting articles containing binary encoded data to non-binary news groups and excessive and repeated posting of off-topic messages to news groups. Industry Canada, a federal department of the Canadian government, investigated spam activity on the internet and found that in the year 2000, spam amounted to about 10% of all email transmitted. Two years later, it had climbed to 30%. And by the end of 2004, spam constituted as much as 70% of email worldwide. And sadly, it's still perfectly legal in most places. Unlike Canadian laws, the state of Virginia has one of the toughest anti-spamming laws in North America. The law focuses on spammers people who send unsolicited bulk email through deceptive or fraudulent means. The new law enforces criminal charges against those who take part in common spamming practices, such as forging the return address line of an email message. In Virginia, the penalty for sending more than 10,000 unsolicited email messages in one day is now a prison sentence from one to five years, along with the relinquishment of any profits and assets related to these fraudulent activities. But those kinds of laws are not yet prevalent. Basically, if anything is going to change, you need to help stamp out spam. You've probably seen an increase in the amount of junk mail which shows up in your email box or on your favorite news group. The activities of a small number of people are becoming a bigger problem for the internet. Help fight spam to keep the internet useful for everyone. Things you can do personally to help combat spam include never responding to it, filtering out your email, and registering complaints with your internet service provider, or ISP. There's one cardinal rule to remember when dealing with spammers and rogue sites. We must hold the high moral ground. Don't threaten violence or vandalism or pursue spam-like tactics in retaliation. This also applies in Usenet. Don't follow up to spam postings, lest your posting also become spam. Spam is something we all have to deal with until stronger laws are put in place. Tools in our email applications and servers, or service providers, are getting much better at recognizing spam and blocking it. It will only let up when it finally becomes unprofitable, and we can all help make that day a little sooner.